what's good y'all welcome to another insecure review my second review look at me y'all where my earring <laughs> i'm not cutting this out either so welcome to season four episode two my official second review i am gonna i'm in the process of saving and all that of the episode one so i am gonna post that first and this will come right after it this episode is called Low Key Distant. Low Key Distant. Okay, so the episode starts. And again, I have my iPad here. So the episode episode starts off with Molly and Andrew. Similar to last, it started off with them. No, it didn't. Cut that. I'm making up shit. Um, it starts off with Molly and Andrew like leaving a restaurant or whatever, and Andrew receives a call from work, and he when molly asks what is going on he kind of gives her a blanket response like oh it's just work um nothing not a big deal like he was about to say it but then he catches himself and he's like i don't want to talk about it i want to talk about that cake and molly like you ain't getting this cake and then it cuts to cake 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 if you want it put your name on it they love getting hit from the back in this episode <laughs> in this show like they always like getting hit from the back so then it jumps back to three months so first episode it was four months prior to I mean before the black party and then this episode is three months before the black party so it scene changes to Issa and Condola walking down Lamar Park I think that's what it's called comment down below if correct me if I'm wrong and Issa is just, you know, panning out her vision about what is going on and what she wants and how she wants it. And just, it, it sounds amazing. And like, I love it. She has big dreams for this. I can't wait to see what it turns out to be. Um, I'm interested to see, like, where their relationship is going to go. Like, is it going to be a positive relationship? Is Condola going to be trifling and conniving? Like, what is it going to be? I'm very interested to see. Um, she offers Condola drinks, you know, for helping her out. Like, you've been, like, helping me be my partner in crime through all of this. Like, let me take you out to drinks. And she's like, oh, well, I actually have some planned on that day. You know, Issa's like, is it business or is it fun? And she, you know, says it's fun. And I, she mentions the place. And Issa paused. And I think it registered that maybe it's where Lawrence is from or something. Like, she's familiar with what they're, what she knew that it was Lawrence that she was talking about. So then it made things awkward. So they both discussed, like, um, how can it still work together without it being awkward? And every time you bring up Lawrence or a memory of Lawrence, it doesn't get stiffy. So they kind of start joking about Lawrence and that kind of helps and you know, it alleviates some of that awkwardness. So I felt like that was kind of mature, like kind of never know if you think that was mature. Like, do you think you could be cool with your ex's new boo? Hmm. Let's see how mature y'all are. <laughs> okay, y'all, it comes to a scene of um, them all sitting in the living room and you have Kelly as, um, what's her name from Baps with that pleather leather outfit on and can barely move with that hair all the way up there. Then you have, um, Tiffany as Cleopatra, I believe. You have Molly as an East Compton Clover. And then it took me a minute to realize who Issa was. But was Issa a Jigaboo from School Days? Comment down below if Issa was a, jig a Jigaboo from School Days. Because that's what I thought. But correct me if I'm wrong. Because it took off like shit incredible. Because I couldn't see the J. But then when I saw the J and it was giving me that, that School Days. Because that's my movie. It was giving me that School Days vibe. I was like, she's supposed to be a Jigaboo. Um, and this, again, it's Halloween. So they're preparing like little bags. And of course... Tiffany is being extra with these bags. Them kids don't want what's in them bags. Um, my, it cuts to Molly and Issa going into the kitchen. I can't remember. Going into somewhere. 
And Molly is kind of telling her, like, oh, I feel kind of left out of everything. So this is the first time that Molly openly kind of says, like, hey, I feel left out. I don't think Issa kind of, you know, picked up on it. You know, kind of just like, girl, okay, <laughs> whatever. Um, she also feels like um, she's telling them that she doesn't feel like Andrew has opened up to her. That Andrew is kind of just, they just Netflixing and chilling, like, they don't really talk. It just it always ends up in sex. Then it cuts to Issa and Calvin, the security guard, getting it in. And again, positions, baby. Big boy got her in positions. Okay, don't sleep on us plus size people. You could change your life. <laughs> but <laughs> Anyway, so he comes and then he's like, he looks down under the covers and realizes that the condom is not there. So, you know, freak out mode starts. Like, so they looking, Issa's like, you know, I don't see it, I don't see it. So she gets up, she goes into the restroom. He's still like, you know, like, why are you yelling from the room? She has a mirror <laughs> looking at her peck peck and that's what we call Philippine in Phil in, in the Philippines called Peck Peck. Uh, <laughs> she has a mirror and looking, trying to see if they can find the condom. Because clearly, if you can't find it, the condom is, you know, stuck up there. So she's talking and she's like, Issa, like I'm disappointed in yourself. And you know, it's like when she's talking to herself. So I thought that was hilarious. And the condom pops out. And it just splat. It was nasty. It splattered, and you can see the juice. I'm moving on. So then the scene moves on to Lawrence and Cadola. Um, they're eating dinner, lunch, something. They're eating, and she mentions that her and Issa discussed him, and he that this makes him feel super uncomfortable. Like, why are y'all discussing me? He ain't here for it. Um. And she asked him, is it okay? But then it pans to him with the fellas. And he's like, hell no, that ain't okay. Like, I don't want... He basically doesn't want Issa to be to tell Condola things that he should be teaching her. That he, he should be, like, giving her to learn about him. He doesn't want it to be maybe watered down or a bias because it's coming from Issa. And you know what I get, what's up with that? He said, "Don't." He said, "Don't pee in the pool where you swim." Tell him, Lawrence, find you a new circle of females to be dating. Like you know, this circle's small. Why would you go after somebody at Tiffany's baby shower? Nine times out of ten, they were gonna know Issa, or they were gonna run into Issa in the same circle. I like that. Don't pee in the pool that you swim in. Don't. Never mind. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of old school sayings that can't come to mind right now but like I can see them in my head with moving on um so he's kind of trying to decide if he's going to talk to Issa and tell her hey kind of back off or is he going to tell Condola hey kind of back off and he's kind of torn he doesn't know which person to go to so then it switches to um, Condola and Issa um, going further, switching to Condola and Issa sitting down, discussing business plans, and Molly walks up. And Molly's face is just like, again, why is she here? Um, this is my best friend. Why, you know, like, she needs to go. And Molly feels left out. This is a, this is another time where it's not explicitly saying she's saying it, but you can just tell by her body language and kind of how she's trying to rush Condola off. And Issa's like, oh no, since you're hungry, go ahead and stay. And the thing got really awkward when there were two menus and Molly, I mean, sorry, there were two menus. Issa and Condola had a menu, took the menus. And Molly would just kind of sit there like, I, you, I, I, and then um, got the menu from Condola. 
And then Issa gives her menu to Condola's like, oh, I know what I want. So it kind of feels like, I've been sitting here 30 seconds saying I needed a menu, best friend, and you ignored me. So again, I caught that. Um, that she was just like, bitch. Um, and I wonder, like, going back to like how their relationship is gonna be. So I'm looking back, trying to see. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to get the other video uploaded. If Molly has an instinct that it's not going to end well or is she just being jealous? Like, is she trying to protect Issa or is she being protective of Issa? So then um, we see, a, like, we see, um, we see Lawrence sitting in front of Issa's apartment and he texts her, hey, I'm outside. So she comes out and he basically just kind of tells her to quit discussing him and doesn't basically doesn't want a conflict of interest uh wants her to know him from him not what Issa tells her so then it goes to molly and andrew molly comes out i mean andrew comes over molly is cooking gumbo and you know he comes in being all hot in the pants you know because this is what they do he come over and he busts it in molly gets him to you know like no we just need to chill like chill chill just that's it and so he tastes the gumbo and was like, mmm, that's salty. <laughs> and Molly's like, I know salty. I know salty. And then she take like, she waits till he walks away and then takes a um, a taste of it. And, she, and lo and behold, it's salty. But she said, I guess we just gonna die today because she wasn't making another roux. And if you've ever made gumbo or like you made true gumbo and you, you from, you from, you got them, them, them roots, baby, you got to sit there and stir that roux forever. Baby, until you get that nice brown, caramel looking roux, you better, you better stare. You better not stop. Or you're going to have some burnt up grease. <laughs> so, um, I did feel her. I'm like, I'm not starting over because baby, Making sure that roux is right. If you don't get your roux right, you can mess up the whole thing. Um, so they're like going through her pictures of her family and she's explaining different stories. And um, Andrew starts to kind of talk about his siblings. And you know, they kind of joke, joke, joke. And then he cuts off, like he pulls back. He doesn't want to talk about it and it becomes an issue so they got into it and he basically was like everything is an issue with you hold that thought i'm gonna come back to that and then he walks out on her he walks out because he don't got time okay and he goes to the show um schoolboy q i think is in this episode performing i don't even know what he, what he what he comment down below what does he um rap sing i don't know who that is my age is showing okay i'm starting to get old because i don't know who the hell schoolboy q is comment down below if he got like a popular song um and then it comes to Issa and molly hiking and this is kind of towards the end of the episode and um Issa kind of tells her that Molly knows how to fuck up some shit. Like, every time Molly has something good, Molly finds a problem in everything. And this doesn't sit well with Molly. Molly has a... Like, Molly, you just called Issa out on the last episode saying that she she um has a lot of mess in her life. You do too, boo. You do too, boo. Like, pot meets kettle. So now that she was on the other foot and... Andrew just told you this, what, a night before, two nights before, whatever. Then the same week that you always have a problem. And then your best friend tells you you have a problem. You might have a problem, boo. Like, you might just have it. Like, accept it. Sit in it, as Iyana would say. Sit in it. So, she didn't like it. Um, Andrew does call when, you know, they're on the, um, they're on the mountain. Andrew calls and he apologizes. He did 
you know, reflect and said he felt like he wasn't being open. And it's going to take a moment. And she says, I'm willing to work with you on it. And, you know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's over there fighting that that. Issa is me and I am Issa. I will fight a bug in a minute. Like, I'm fighting it. Because get out of my way. Um, Molly says, oh, that was work calling. And Issa was just like, oh, you, you work a lot. It bothered me that... It bothered me. Like, I, I want... I don't know why Molly didn't just say that that was Andrew. Like, I guess maybe because Issa had already said what she said. But, I mean, I don't know. That's, that's hard for me because I'm their best friend. That sometimes I do say things that may not be sensitive. I'm very insensitive when it comes to certain things because I just kind of tell it how it is. And sometimes I have to be like, I tell my best friend all the time, do you want, you want me to be best friend? Like, you want me to be who I am best friend? Like, I'm going to read you your rights and whoever rights that it pertain to, like, I'm going to get in their ass. Like, let me know. Or do you need me to be more sensitive um, to your feelings? Like, tell me which person you want. And I feel like... Again, it bothered me. I don't know. It bothered me. Molly bothers me. Like, you can try to read Issa. Okay, so I lost my train of thought. Okay, so I'm a teacher. So, you know, we all doing this digital learning. So I had my laptop open because I had posted a lesson. And I just had my email open. Why? I don't know. I don't know how to separate work from, like, it's not work hours. Um, so I was responding to a student. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay, so I don't know where I was, but I did want to talk about this. So Issa does say that she gave up security bay. She gave up security bay. She said plan B was becoming plan A because clearly from the beginning of the, the beginning of the episode, the kind of got stuck up there. And I guess this ain't the first time that they done had a, a scare of, you know, that and she's tired of being scared that she's gonna get pregnant by somebody that already has a plethora of kids um and then she said that thing is fat and you know she's kind of happy i'm like girl what you mean what you do this? anyway <laughs> um so my i have two okay i have a question so my question at the end of what do you do when your best friend is getting too close to someone else and this was in the wind down this was one of the questions in the wind down tonight um after the episode goes off it has this so what do you do when your best friend is getting too close to someone this happened to me in college um like once i left college my friend was still at college i kind of started feeling like we weren't as close anymore and i didn't understand that you know being i didn't understand the out of sight out of mind because that was my best friend like and i didn't understand it so i guess like now as i'm you know it's been a couple of years i just feel like don't leave me out i'm a very don't leave me out let me have the opportunity to say no i don't want to come but don't just like push me to the curb for other people like that that will start to internalize me i feel like you have different friends for different things so i will be okay like i don't my best friend doesn't like my friends does not only have to be friends with me but again don't i'm i feel like he's in the wine now she said don't leave me out don't leave me out i like to be included okay <laughs> i am important i am kind and i am smart okay don't leave me out so this is episode two um low-key distant Go ahead and subscribe, like, and share. Comment down below if you want to see me review any of some other shows. Again, this is only my second show review, um, second time reviewing. I do plan on reviewing Married to Medicine LA because it'll be the second season. And then Real Housewives of Potomac. Is there any other show that you want me to review? I don't really watch Love and Hip Hop anymore or Black Ink Crew, so I really wouldn't be able to help y'all with that. Um... But what other shows would y'all like to see? Love y'all. Good night.